Okay, I think I'll start. Well, yeah. um, welcome everyone. This midday, we're also having a great topic. And it's about the changes that we have been encountering since the COVID-19 epidemic or pandemic actually, uh, because our education modalities have been changed. So our mobility with Erasmus has also been changing. Okay, I think I'll start. Well, um, well this midday, we're also having a great topic and it's about the changes that we... Okay, sorry, everyone. I'll continue now. And we're going to talk about the blended mobility of Erasmus and the new opportunities for our students, our faculty, and how we will move from here. I have two distinguished guests. Uh, one is um, Associate Professor Fatame Bahaduri from Bezmalian Vakuf University, um, faculty of uh, pharmacy. And I'll just first leave the floor to her. And then we'll listen to our other guest, our dear friend, uh, Professor Lucia uh, Sasa uh, from uh, Sapienza University. Please, Fatemi Hoja. You have to unmute yourself, please. Thank you. Thank you so much, dear Rector. Uh, I'm trying to share. Okay. So yes, uh, thank you so much for the introduction, dear uh, chancellors, uh, professors, uh, colleagues, and students. Uh, today, I will try to give uh, general uh, information about the new kind of uh, Erasmus mobility program, the blended mobility. As you all know, uh, as uh, we are get used to uh, the uh, regular Erasmus uh, student exchange program, during the Erasmus mobility program, you uh, choose a country to uh, get your education, a period of your education there. You travel to, to, to that country and uh, you uh, continue your education uh, for a certain time period in that country. However, in the new kind of uh, Erasmus mobility program, uh, namely blended mobility or uh, the, uh, the Erasmus plus blended mobility program, um, it is possible to have a virtual education in your host institution, in your homeland, in your hometown, and then go for a short physical mobility abroad and have uh, some let's say, uh, practical experiments there. Uh, Erasmus uh, Plus program started this hybrid uh, kind of uh, mobility in June uh, 2020, uh, most probably inspired by the new educational system of uh, pandemic. Uh, and uh, it seems that it's going to be very uh, useful uh, in, in, in uh, uh, next years. Uh, the hybrid mobility uh, could be implemented to both uh, key action one and key action two. As you all know, uh, we have two kind of uh, key actions uh, in uh, Erasmus uh, programs. A key action one, which is mobility, the regular one, in the one that we, uh, we, we change students uh, in, in terms of uh, key action one, and key action two, which provides the partnership between two or uh, more uh, universities. So it is uh, possible to apply this kind of hybrid education uh, to both key action one and key action two uh, programs. Let's uh, see in more details, what is this uh, blended mobility? Uh, blended mobility, as I said, it's a physical mobility combined with a virtual component. Uh, it has two types. Uh, actually, uh, one is individual in which a certain student, one, two, three, or uh, some more students, uh, goes to, uh, uh, chooses to have a blended uh, Erasmus education with another European country. And we also have intensive program. 
intensive program uh, is, uh, does not take part between only two institutions. It takes part between more than two institutions uh, or more than two European countries in which uh, universities or industrial institutions come together and let's say um, make a consortium actually, uh, and uh, they provide a, a Erasmus mobility program for uh, students all together. So let's say our student uh, is in Turkey having uh, the uh, theoretical education uh, at uh, his or her hometown, uh, a virtual education uh, in online. And then after getting a certain amount of information, he or she travels to another European country and uh, get some more uh, theoretical or practical education in which many other students from many other countries are taking part in this uh, physical mobility program. Uh, so this provides actually, as I will mention uh, further, uh, this, this, this provides um, uh, for many uh, students from um, many countries to uh, participate in uh, Erasmus program easier than uh, before. Uh, what is important about this uh, blended kind of uh, education is that uh, it uh, could consist both studies and traineeships. But what is, what is important is that in this kind of um, special kind of education, uh, the virtual learning must take longer than the physical mobility. In, in other ter terms, the uh, uh, workload of the virtual learning uh, must be higher than the uh, physical mobility. Uh, what, is, uh, what is even more important is that uh, the uh, virtual uh, the ACTS that the, the ECTS that we provide for the students, uh, in during uh, this uh, program, uh, the virtual component component must facilitate a collaborative online learning exchange and teamwork. Uh, furthermore, we uh, as professors as as who are uh, organizing this uh, kind of um, mobilities, we have to take care of the uh, ECTS, uh, values of students to uh, let them not to lose any uh, kind of, uh, uh, let's say, study values, or uh, uh, we have to be careful uh, to graduate them uh, right on time, not later than other uh, regular students. As I said, in uh, uh, this kind of um, hybrid mobility, virtual learning is longer than physical mobility. So let's see um, what kind of physical mobility is possible to have in this kind of education. First of all, I have to say that uh, the uh, Erasmus Charter principles apply equally to blended mobility participants as to any other type of uh, mobility. So having a hybrid education in Erasmus, having a blended Erasmus uh, uh, mobility program does not mean easier kind of Erasmus uh, mobility program, does not mean, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, less uh, serious kind of mobility program. They, uh, the, the regular long-term mobility program and hybrid uh, mobility uh, program are uh, equally serious uh, in terms of uh, taking care of those uh, Erasmus uh, Charter principles. So let's see what are the what are the kinds of physical mobilities that could be provided uh, for for students. Uh, it's possible to have a study in a, a partner higher education institution, means that after having a virtual learning at, at home time, the student could go uh, abroad to another university to have more uh, theoretical uh, lectures there. Or it is possible to have different kind of traineeships uh, abroad. Uh, a traineeship in an enterprise, 
a traineeship in a research institution, a traineeship in a laboratory, or any other traineeships that uh, you could imagine uh, that could be useful for a, a student. Also, it is uh, possible to make the, this physical mobility a combination of theoretical studies and uh, traineeships. Uh, today, uh, our uh, audiences are students. We, we emphasize more uh, the application of this hybrid mobility uh, for, for students, but I would like to mention that it is possible to provide this uh, kind of uh, Erasmus uh, for uh, professors, for academic and non-academic staff uh, as well, especially in the intensive kind of uh, mobility. So uh, this kind of project offers uh, the students an equivalent to an uh, Erasmus placement, except for not being away from home for several months. The professional context in which student work offer them technical know-how, but also give them a bunch of practical experiences as well. As you may all uh, as you all know, especially Professor Sasso uh, remembers very well, we had a special kind of webinars during the pandemic in our uh, institution in Bezmalem, and we called it Stronger Together. Uh, I would like to say actually Stronger Together was a kind of uh, hybrid mobility if we had extended it to include some uh, physical mobilities too. So as we had in Stronger Together webinars, we had the chance of getting lectures, getting information from so many uh, professors from uh, so many countries. Uh, and uh, actually we had a hybrid education from uh, different universities and different uh, countries when we were sitting in our uh, university in our homeland. So uh, imagine that uh, you, you extend this uh, Stronger Together webinars to have some physical mobilities, to uh, have some traineeships uh, together, uh, and this, this uh, gives you a, uh, ideal uh, hybrid mobility. I just wanted to give this example to explain, uh, to help you imagine how a hybrid mobility could happen. So, the, uh, let's see what are the objectives uh, of these uh, actions. Uh, first of all, it, it establishes a European educational area, but it also uh, strengthens the link between education and research. Uh, in my own faculty, for example, in Faculty of Pharmacy, it will be so nice for a student and even for professors to get some uh, virtual uh, lectures uh, from uh, other countries and then uh, uh, apply those educations during the traineeships of short physical uh, mobility uh, parts of the uh, program. For example, in a famous uh, industrial uh, uh, pharmaceutical uh, agency. So uh, it, it really, this kind of program uh, provides a, a strengthening uh, between education and research. Uh, also, this uh, hybrid kind of uh, Erasmus mobility program fosters the critical thinking skills for uh, students. Also, uh, as we all know, as the um, Erasmus uh, coordinators of uh, our uh, institutions, uh, Parents provide uh, the, uh, some uh, more, more economical uh, supplies for their um, uh, children to, uh, to go for Erasmus exchange uh, programs. Uh, we all know that the scholarships paid to uh, students uh, during the Erasmus mobility program is not enough for uh, living a, a relaxed life in uh, European countries. So uh, actually uh, parents take, take part in those kind of uh, student exchange mobilities as well. Uh, however, if we change uh, the uh, long-term mobility program type to the hybrid uh, mobility program type, we provide long-term staying at home with short-term uh, traveling uh, for students, 
that makes any kind of student with any kind of special need uh, to uh, take part in uh, Erasmus programs. Also, uh, this kind of program facilitates uh, the, uh, uh, the, the facilitates the Erasmus exchange of uh, student uh, students with uh, special physical needs uh, as well. Uh, another objective of uh, this action is to uh, develop different skills of students, especially the communicational uh, skills, because when they are having their uh, virtual studies at home, uh, they are going to have other students from other countries uh, presented in the same education, in the same uh, virtual environment. So uh, they start communicate with them uh, during those um, virtual educations. And then they meet uh, their, let's say, virtual friends uh, physically when they take the physical travel part of the uh, program. And uh, the last but not least important uh, objective of the uh, action is to share the expertise. Uh, we know that different European countries, different uh, universities uh, possess different levels of expertise. Uh, by gathering uh, more than two uh, institutions in one uh, mobility program, uh, you provide students uh, listening and educating from those different levels and different kinds of expertises, which uh, I think is it's, 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 uh, very precious. And now, um, if we accept that money talks, uh, we have to say that, uh, they, uh, dear students, that you will get an uh, online uh, language course, sign an Erasmus Plus uh, learning agreement, and uh, your uh, study or internship is uh, recognized with the credits as if you were in a regu regular Erasmus Plus period abroad, but you get the scholarship payments only for, for the days that uh, you are traveling to another country. So when you are at your hometown getting the virtual education, you won't be paid any scholarships. So the requirements are blended mobility uh, needs to uh, start with virtual education. You have to get the virtual education at first and then uh, travel to another uh, country. For uh, uh, the Erasmus Plus uh, requirement is that your plan should be as I said, uh, first online mobility and then uh, going to uh, uh, another country. And this physical mobility, uh, which uh, passes in, in, in another European uh, country, uh, must be at least a two months for internship and three months for uh, study abroad. Uh, as I said, you uh, only receive the Erasmus Plus scholarship for the period you are actually abroad. Uh, and when you are registering uh, for an Erasmus uh, mobility, please uh, do not forget that choose the blended mobility when you are choosing the type of your mobility, if it exists in your university. There are so many advantages, of course, you could uh, imagine how advantageous is this kind of hybrid mobility, but um, uh, to me, the most important thing is that this kind of uh, hybrid mobility does not distribute regular home activities. If um, you are a fan of the gym near to your house, uh, you could continue going to that gym uh, while you are also participating in an Erasmus educational program. Or uh, if um, you have a very restricted uh, food regime, uh, you could stay in uh, your, uh, you could continue your habits when uh, you are still having uh, an uh, Erasmus uh, education. So it's a really, really advantages. To make a summary, uh, this kind of um, hybrid mobility is a 
a combination of uh, online learning uh, together with uh, classroom uh, learnings. This is the reason it is called blended learnings. This is a young friend of uh, us, not from our university, who has uh, taken part in a blended mobility program, shares with us the, um, his uh, experiences. And he says that young people from Syria, Turkey, Italy, Ireland, Egypt, or Romania uh, will not uh, see problems the way you do. And learning about this with chatting, with chatting is a mind-opening experience. So the Erasmus Pro Plus virtual exchange is a great tool for your resume, a great opportunity to reflect on uh, political issues and an international uh, presence for your social life. Thank you so much for listening. Please contact us via uh, iro at bezmalian.edu.tr if you had any questions. Thank you for Temoja. This was a very um, detailed explanation of the new way of uh, benefiting from Erasmus projects. So now we're switch gears to Professor Luciana Sasso from Sapienza University, and he's going to share his thoughts about this new type of mobility um, availabilities for everyone uh, around Europe. Please, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. It's a great pleasure to be here again in this uh, very nice uh, uh, webinar. Uh, many thanks to the president, uh, Rumeza Kazanchoklu, and uh, also to the international office, uh, to Sapsen uh, Bati for organizing this webinar. I also want to thank uh, very much uh, um, the previous speaker, Fatima Bahadori, for having uh, set in the scene uh, very well. Uh, I agree on many points uh, she, she made. Uh, of course, uh, we have to say um, very openly that uh, she was very optimistic and very positive. Uh, we have to say the students are a bit more critical on some of these points. So I will try to share with you also this, uh, this view from the students because I'm, I'm in touch with uh, several students from all over Europe. And um, let's say how they see uh, virtual mobility and uh, blended mobility, I think is not as positive as we see it. I mean, I fully agree, and I will try to make some other examples that uh, uh, blended mobility is a very good opportunity for students. But still uh, uh, my experience, you know, in talking with, talking with them is that of course uh, uh, they miss uh, the physical mobility. They really want to travel abroad. They want to stay for six months or one year abroad in another country, in another city. I mean, this uh, cultural aspect uh, is very important for them. Uh, from my point of view, I have to say, uh, we need to distinguish as uh, universities. I mean, we need uh, on one side to provide knowledge to students, to provide opportunity for learning, uh, to focus on hard skills. Uh, in my view, uh, hard skills are, of course, are very important. This is our main, uh, goal to, to have uh, uh, students you know, who study well, who will finish their degree uh, you know, in a good way with a good preparation. But at the same time, of course, we need to help uh, these uh, young people to, to develop uh, in the best way, uh, also their personality, uh, their intercultural skills, their uh, soft skills, etc. So, I mean, we need to balance, I have to say, these two, these two elements. And uh, uh, let's say a, a traditional physical experience abroad was helping them very much to do that. So we have to uh, admit that uh, the lack of uh, long periods of physical mobility uh, was uh, something uh, that you know, students uh, miss uh, and they consider, of course, negative. Uh, but I share uh, you know, the views of uh, the previous speakers saying that there are also many other opportunities. I mean, in virtual mobility, uh, indeed, we can expose our students to lectures from professors from basically from all over the world. So in terms of knowledge, in terms of quality of the lectures, I think we can increase. I mean, of course, in any institution, you know, we try our best to have 
<coughs> the best professors in the world. This is our aim. But of course, uh, you 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 have uh, uh, in other in other institutions in other countries uh, individual uh, uh, you know scholars with more experience with uh, uh, more uh, knowledge on a specific topic. So the opportunity of virtual mobility through the networks that we have is to really have a, a higher quality education because again we can have modules taught by different professors you know, from different countries covering, you know, one full subject from different points of view. And this does not have any more the cost that had before. I mean, before uh, COVID, this was also possible, but culturally was not done, basically. So, the, uh, say, this virtual mobility was not implemented, I would say, before, before COVID, so before 2020 in, in Europe. Uh, so before, of course, to have a visiting professor, was not easy uh, because uh, there was a problem of cost. I mean, to pay a salary that was reasonable for that person, but also very often to have people willing to spend two, three, four months at your institution was not easy because of course we are all very busy. So, uh, I mean, it's not easy for all of us to say, okay, yes, I will leave my own institution and then I will go to uh, another institution for three months. I mean, very often you cannot do it for uh, engagements that you have from the professional point of view, family uh, issues. I mean, overall, the physical mobility of professors was difficult. So it was not easy to have very high quality visiting professors. Very often you could you know, try to invite uh, maybe very good people at the end of their career or maybe just retired, you know, who had a bit more time, but, you know, it was very difficult to have a, a high level professor in the middle of a, his or her career uh, willing to leave the institution for three, for three or four or, or more months. So again, I see all the advantages of virtual and blended mobility, and we need to talk more, I think, with students to show them this. I think this is not fully clear to them yet. I mean, that's uh, I think this uh, pandemic uh, brought many problems, uh, creates difficulties for them, of course, but uh, also there are opportunities. And again, in terms of quality of lectures, uh, indeed, uh, the quality of the lectures themselves can improve. Uh, the quality of this platform, like the one we are using today, is very high now. We can really see each other very well, listen, listening to, to people from all over the world. So there are, there are all these, uh, um, these opportunities. And uh, I think the, um, the best way, uh, as also Fatima was mentioning, is to link uh, this virtual part to a physical mobility. So we should keep uh, physical mobility in a shorter, shorter uh, way. I mean, uh, not maybe to, for a student to go abroad for uh, six months or one year like before, but maybe to attend uh, one or more classes online for several months and then have the possibility to visit that university at the end, maybe in the summer, to spend two, three, four weeks in that university and meet the other students uh, who attended the same course, to meet the professors who taught that course. So I think this could be a model that could be very effective because this could be also an incentive to tell our students, look, you will, you will attend these classes online, but if everything will go well, you will also be able to do uh, this uh, physical mobility for a few weeks. And this also has the advantage, as uh, it was mentioned also by Fatima, of uh, the so-called socioeconomic issues. We have been debating the socioeconomic issues in Erasmus for a long time. Erasmus was created in 1987, and is a very successful program. We are very proud of Erasmus. I think it's one of the flagships of, of Europe all, all over the, the world. Everyone knows Erasmus. This is, a, I think, is a very good uh, achievement for us. But let's face it, uh, Erasmus before COVID was not very inclusive. I mean, in terms of percentage of students, participating in the Erasmus program, we have to face the numbers and say, look, only a, a few percent of the, the, the total population could actually 
do Erasmus for different reasons. One reason is the, of course, financial financial issues. Uh, to go abroad uh, is, of course, expensive. Uh, even if uh, many universities, like also mine, is co-funding co the Erasmus, so we, we put on, on top of uh, the Erasmus scholarship uh, some, some more money, we give some benefits to the students, but still, uh, I, uh, we have to say that uh, very often, uh, um, if your family is not supporting you a bit, uh, it's not easy uh, for a student to go abroad. Also for psychological reasons. I mean, in, in some families, in which, of course, there are some financial issues. The family is pushing the students to try to be fast and to graduate as, as soon as possible. And you know, from the cultural point of view, the family will say, "Yeah, don't uh, don't go abroad, don't uh, uh, waste time." Even if we know that actually it's not a waste of time. On the contrary, but psychologically, uh, we have to. If we look at the numbers of the students using the Erasmus scholarship, you can see clearly that there is not a very fair distribution of uh, uh, the students from all uh, socioeconomic background. So the, the, this problem has been debated for, for decades. And again, virtual mobility, <coughs> on the contrary, can be more inclusive because you can, uh, I mean, do this kind of exchanges more easily. Let's think also of uh, other issues like, you know, maybe um, young parents with, uh, with children, uh, both, uh, you know, men and women, maybe if you started a family early and then you are doing still, uh, maybe you're still studying at the university, again, it's not easy to leave uh, for several months, but on the contrary, you can leave maybe for a few weeks uh, and go for. So, I mean, there are all these uh, these advantages, but again, I think it's key to communicate with the students, to try to, uh, you know, explain all these advantages uh, and uh, uh, try to make sure that they, they understand these advantages. Also, there are some uh, bylaws. Let's also face these other issues. <laughs> I mean, when we uh, organize all the activities for students in a virtual way, uh, we're in involving uh, you know, international partners. Of course, sometimes there are some bottlenecks related to uh, the, the laws of our countries. Uh, the, uh, the laws uh, related to uh, the, the rules of the Erasmus program. Uh, I mean, Fatima already mentioned you know, the, the topic of the scholarships. Of course, when you get a scholarship, you know, you are supposed to go uh, abroad for that period. And so basically uh, from the financial point of view, the students you know, will not receive a, a scholarship uh, during the virtual mobility. Even if that also was debated a lot, especially in 2020, uh, the national agencies, you know, in different countries were, were discussing about this and say, okay, how uh, can we still pay uh, students uh, because maybe they had to interrupt uh, the Erasmus program because of COVID, but, you know, they are still uh, studying online. So there, this discussion was there, uh, or, I mean, uh, uh, other issues were related to, let's say, financial expenses related to virtual mobility. Maybe you did not have at that time a fast internet or a, a good device to connect with the inter internet. And so uh, the issue was, uh, can we pay using the Erasmus funds <coughs> the subscription to the internet provider or to, uh, to buy a new computer or to, to connect to the internet? So this kind of issues were debated and there were in different countries also different, different choices. Uh, but it, again, it was, it was an interesting uh, debate, but you know, financial issues for sure, uh, I mean, again, should be uh, debated with, uh, with the students. So, I mean, uh, to conclude this point, I have to say uh, virtual mobility can have uh, several advantages, including the quality of teaching and including also <coughs> the inclusivity uh, of, again, students uh, who for different reasons cannot go abroad for a long time. Uh, in terms of traineeships, uh, it was mentioned also by, by Fatima before, uh, of course, the traineeships on the contrary should be physical in, in my view. We should try to keep uh, traineeships really uh, in a physical way in uh, research centers, in companies, etc. I think that is, uh, that is key uh, to really have a, a work experience, uh, uh, you know, um, in a physical way. So I have to say that uh, the Erasmus traineeship program to try now that you know hopefully this uh, pandemic will uh, will end uh, as soon as possible we hope um, trainships <coughs> Sorry. 
will should should be uh, mainly uh, mainly uh, physical. This is a uh, is an important uh, point. So I mean, we can link. Uh, I have to say, all this uh, innovation uh, in mobility, also in general, to the innovative pedagogies uh, that we are actually uh, are trying to implement uh, after COVID. I mean, uh, again, many things are not completely new, but COVID in uh, with this tragedy and, and all the respect for all the people who, who suffered, you know, during this period, uh, gave universities also opportunities to innovate. So to teach online is not just a technical thing. We need to teach in a different way. We need to involve our students in a different way, which is easier. I mean, to create a group of students working together and preparing maybe a PowerPoint presentation together. I think it's easier if we do it online, rather, uh, I mean, Roma, for instance, my city is, is a big city and, and people to meet physically and prepare something together. Uh, I mean, they, they have to face challenging and, and maybe stay in the public transportation for, for more than one hour. To meet, uh, uh, you know, online and prepare uh, a work together and present it to the class is, is much easier. So I have to say that uh, the way we teach is not exactly the same. We have to be more, again, inclusive. We have to involve more students to make them actor, to, to, to prepare themselves and then to present to the class, you know, to use this model that is called, as you know, the flipped classroom. This is, again, is not something new, but online, you can do it even, even better than, uh, than in person. So I have to say when, uh, especially in 2020, 2021, uh, I heard a lot of discussion about this uh, screen fatigue, you know, the people that were bored, be online, et cetera. In my view, uh, I'm, I'm more optimistic. Uh, to teach online uh, is not different from teaching in person. I think students were bored even before <laughs> sometimes. I mean, uh, sitting in their chairs, uh, you know, in the rooms, uh, if the professor was talking all the time and without involving the class at all, uh, without, uh, you know, asking questions, without, I think that also was boring before. I think all of us have been students a long time ago, but I still remember there were some excellent professors and then there were the professors a bit more boring or very boring. <laughs> So this, it happened, it happened before. So it's, this is not different today. Uh, so I, in that case, I'm quite optimistic that online we can teach, we can teach well, as long as we need to involve more students and make them actors, uh, uh, you know, of their education. I think young people more and more uh, want to learn uh, in their own way. Uh, things change in the last uh, decades and uh, knowledge is really now easily available. In the world, uh, internet completely change uh, this this aspect. So knowledge is available, and the professor there should be guides for the students to help them to learn on their own. I mean, it's not like before that the professor was transferring knowledge uh, to directly to the student. No, we need to guide the students uh, to learn and be aware that it's impossible to know everything. So <laughs> basically, the way the, each learning pathway for each person is different. Uh, I think students in the same class uh, will not uh, learn exactly the same things. This is something that we, sh we should accept. Uh, and so again, make them more uh, active in uh, learning by themselves, uh, uh, you know, doing research, uh, you know, to link more education to research. This is key. And again, can be done, uh, I think, in perfectly uh, with these new uh, online, uh, online technologies. Uh, let me, uh, I don't want to talk too much, but I want to make another point also that is important. So that is related to interdisciplinary and intersectoral education. This is again, something that's online can be done uh, easily. I mean, to really have uh, the possibility for students, again, to learn at the same time in a more, more uh, articulated way, uh, you know, being exposed to different disciplines uh, at the same time. Uh, if we have the courage to remove uh, some of the details from each discipline, I think we don't have to learn by heart all the details anymore. The details of every discipline are available on the internet. You use your telephone and then you can find easily some numbers or some tables or whatever you, you are looking for. But if you don't have the general knowledge, if you don't have the frame, uh, if you don't know in general very well that, that discipline, uh, you will not be able to, to find anything. So we need to uh, remove a bit some details. 
make uh, education more interdisciplinary, more intersectoral, uh, which means you know the cooperation with companies is easier. I mean, today online. Before, um, I remember I was always trying to involve, let's say, uh, alumni of uh, you know uh, my university uh, working companies, you know, to to uh, meet maybe with the students, to talk to the students, to try to explain you know, how is the maybe labor market is working, which are the opportunities after graduation. But it was difficult because of course, people working in the companies are very busy. Uh, they, they don't have you know, enough time to spare for these activities. After COVID, I organized many webinars involving uh, you know, colleagues from companies. And it was much easier because basically, uh, I mean, if you, if you know a person say, would you like to spare a couple of hours of your time to talk to the student, that, that's possible. Maybe that person would be too busy to spare, you know, the full day and come to the university and meet meet everyone in person. But it's so easy nowadays to, to have these contacts online, which are very useful uh, for students. So <coughs> this uh, exposure, let's say, of our students uh, to industry is actually easier uh, nowadays. So this is another advantage, advantage I think, of of uh, uh, this part. So I will stop here and uh, I'm looking forward to maybe some, some questions or to go deeper on some of these points. Again, uh, thank you very much for uh, your attention. Professor Sasso and Dr. Bahadori, I'm so grateful to have your uh, speech now about blended mobility. I just wanted to add something that, uh, yes, national agencies of each country should uh, inform the institutions that uh, has this uh, blended mobility in their uh, actions, in their projects. So now we, we are in the period uh, that we need to be informed by uh, uh, national agencies to convince our students and staff uh, to use blended mobility. As you both say, we have the limited uh, grant uh, for our students and staff to participate for us. So this is a good formulation, uh, really good formulation. Uh, to make our students and staff uh, to participate more and more uh, in Erasmus. So I would like to just thank you uh, for both of you. Yes, it has some advantages and it has some questions for our students because they want to be abroad. Uh, and for me, uh, to some part, Erasmus means going abroad, meeting with friends, knowing the culture, uh wandering around the streets uh having your coffee in a different country yes uh but uh, as you both say uh, said uh, it has advantages like uh having uh, how can i say having uh being taught by taught by great uh, professors in your home institution or knowing more about because it's a combination both staying at home and going abroad uh, so you be you will be just uh, informed before going there uh, new about your friends your uh, lectures your professors then go there uh, to take part in an Erasmus so it's great for me it's great to this part so thank you again uh, I don't know if anyone has any questions to our guests I would like to uh, make the floor to my president, Professor Kazanjolo, if she wants to say something. Of course, I have many things to <laughs> comment about after <laughs> Luciano and uh, Fatemeh's talk. Well, yes, this is an this looks like an opportunity, but I totally agree with Luciano that uh, some of the students are not very eager to do this because it doesn't provide them the cultural contact or face-to-face -face contact or being there and feeling the culture, feeling the education and having an experience. But for the time being, this was a great chance for them to continue uh, this program and the education indeed. And you're also right about, yes, some of our students get bored while we're having them face-to-face -face lectures as well. But 
I also have to admit that we, we developed this Zoom fatigue or online fatigue among ourselves because we realize that it makes life easier and we can reach out to you at any time, any day, um, any week, you know, day actually, not any day, but also any time during the week. So we, we all got fatigued with this Zoom and online and we're, um, as humans are liking to touch people, hear about them, feel about the reflexes they're gonna give and learn from their experiences uh, at the site. Uh, I really believe that this is one of the things that will continue and the students will adapt to this change. They, they have adapted to change in the medical curriculum. You were commenting about, or the pharmaceutical, uh, the pharmacy curriculum now, which has turned into system-based education and the problem-based education not like the one we have been doing so uh, we will get used to this type of education uh, for a while it seems hmm. so is there any other comments that you have from our students just maybe you could share your experience with the number of students that have who have applied to the program during the last two years during the pandemic. I know I'm aware of uh, our university's numbers went down, uh, yes. but, but what it happened decreased. in terms actually, of the application rates, not the actual program itself? Actually, yes, it uh, decreased the, uh, the eagerness of the students uh, didn't decrease. They want to go abroad. They want to take part in the Erasmus, but uh, the COVID changed everything because most of the students needs to get the visa, needs to get acceptance. Uh, all of them needs to get the acceptance for their placements, for their traineeship, for their study. And many universities just uh, close down, uh, do their lectures online. Uh, so they don't want to have uh, students even stop uh, during the pandemic. So uh, I think because of that, this formulation was really is really great. Uh, and uh, it fostered, uh, it encouraged students and staff to apply Erasmus again uh, and participated again. So it will help us, it supports us. If anyone has any questions or comments, because I didn't see, let me just see the chat box. No. So thank you. I would like to thank you for all of you uh, to be here with us, to share your knowledge with us, because really, uh, I would like to just repeat it again. We need to be informed about blended mobility uh, to believe it and to encourage and convince our students and staff to take participate in it. Thank you. Thank you. We are thankful to thank you too. You. Thank you, Sefsan. Thank you, Luciano. Thank you, Fatima. And as Fatima was referring, we're stronger together, though, through the online programs. But we know that our hearts together and our brains are working together and will make uh, greater opportunities for uh, our students and our staff. Anyway, thanks for being with us this um, Thank day. you. Thank you, Rumeza. Uh, again, it was a very nice uh, discussion. Again, it's important to share, you know, our experiences to see, I mean, how different universities are facing. I mean, of course, uh, we have challenges. Uh, this was not an easy period of, for, for all of us, but I think, again, we need to be positive and uh, share this positivity again with the students because uh, again, in my view, we lose uh, something, but we gain uh, many, many other things, including the contact, you know, with, uh, with colleagues. You know, Rumeza, I think after COVID, we met online uh, five or six times and before it was, uh, did not happen. I mean, uh, this happened to me also with many other colleagues. It's so easy now to do a Zoom. Uh, I, uh, yeah, one of the few human beings uh, who did not feel uh, the screen fatigue uh, because I, I really like to have a Zoom meeting. I mean, half an hour, one hour with some colleagues, talk and prepare uh, some activities. This is also increasing the quality, I mean, of, of teaching, research, 
uh, engagement, you know, in many projects in the society, etc. So uh, I would say we save uh, a lot of time uh, because, again, uh, the, uh, to meet personally, it was nice to have lunch together, to have a coffee, but also it was uh, time consuming. I mean, uh, in a physical meeting, usually you had to spare the full morning or the full afternoon for a meeting. Now we do uh, 10 uh, Zoom <laughs> meetings in one day or 15. Uh, so it's, uh, it's very efficient. And this, again, this efficiency can benefit our, our students because we can provide to them more, more opportunities. So again, I'm quite optimistic. Uh, and then of course, uh, the idea is to go back to the new normal uh, in which uh, we call it, in which of course, some uh, physical mobility will be easier again. Uh, I think uh, not only for Erasmus, but in general for young people, in the last, uh, let's say, two decades, uh, in Europe was so easy to travel, you know, with, um, you know, <clears throat> go to from one country to another, also on vacation. I mean, some, uh, let's say, intercultural uh, skills are also developed through the, uh, you know, free time. And let's not focus only on university activity. So to, to, to resume that kind mm -hmm. of uh, way of living, which students were easily, uh, you know, traveling, uh, abroad uh, in general, also for the application, uh, that that is something that we need to resume. So we, in that case, again, is beyond uh, just education, but in general, uh, traveling, uh, see uh, see other countries, other people, etc. That is key for for young people. So again, thank you very much for this very nice morning discussion. <laughs> all the best, all the best, Rumeza and Sarves and, and all the best. Thanks a lot. All the best.